All right, so let's talk about one of the most intriguing and versatile lights I've seen in a long, long time. That is the Aperture Infinity Bar PB3. Now, Aperture did send me these lights for free. I did not pay for them. Although Aperture is not paying for this video to be made for them. So this is going to be my honest opinion about these lights. They are really, really cool and really useful and really versatile. There are a few drawbacks. I'm gonna cover those drawbacks in this video and give you my honest opinion. But overall, I'm super excited because for the last few years, I've been wanting a different kind of light. And this is that different kind of light. So this is the PB3, the one foot. And I've been using tube lights for the last few years. And this is a three foot tube light. And while these have been game changers in their own way of being able to put these up, orient them in different ways, do HSI, CCT, being able to control those things, a three foot tube light just isn't that great at the end of the day. It's a little bit too big for most applications. It's a little bit too bulky. And if you wanted to chop this thing down, well, I mean, you couldn't do that. You couldn't chop this light down. And that is where the Infinity Bar is super unique that you can attach multiple of these together to create different configurations. I think you can add up to 10 of these together at one time, which is really, really unique. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the design, the build quality. I'm gonna show some ways that you can use these Infinity Bars within your own filmmaking, whether that's for interviews, for corporate, for documentaries, or more creative looks, maybe for short films or feature length films, how you can use Infinity Bars within your workflow and within your filmmaking. All right, so first impressions, pulling out of the box, the build quality is really, really nice. The first thing that you'll notice here on the back are two really strong magnets. And because this is a bar light, you can actually have magnets to be able to mount and connect this light in different different variations, different options versus a tube light that's gonna be round and not give you that flexibility at all. So those are really nice and those are really, really strong. When you first flip on the Infinity Bar, the first thing that I notice is the battery indicator and that it has over two hours of runtime. It's advertised at 120 minutes or two hours of runtime at max intensity, but it's nice that they provide right here the DC power and that is provided within the case. What you'll notice here too on the edges is this is where you can actually bring connectors in to be able to expand the bar from this one being the PB3, the one foot, you can expand it out and add additional bars to make this a two foot or three foot. And then next is the connector that allows you to expand this out and use other Infinity Bars. It's included with a wrench so you can tighten all this stuff down. So you can easily add this to another one. Now we've gone from just a one foot. So now we have a two foot. These are connected in and now with and the Citus link, and we can set up a new scene with this infinity bar. We can control these together and have them pixel mapped through the Citus link. All right, so now within Citus link, now that we've actually connected them, they are wired in together. We can go in here to all of our fixtures within our group setting. We can control the intensity. We can control the CCT. And that is perfectly seamless. So if I flip it over here, I wanna go warmer. It's completely seamless between both of them. We can shift the green and the magenta and we can increase the intensity. Then as we dive into the menu, the first thing I wanna point out here on the CCT is having the green and magenta shift. This is really nice because my previous bars did not have this option and the bars that I were using typically had more of a magenta shift. So having green magenta shift right here built in is really, really nice so that you have full control over what the color, what the actual look is of that temperature. Now on this one, you can go all the way up to 10,000 which is pretty blue. And you can also go all the way down to 2000. It's pretty orange. The one thing I will say here is that this rotating dial is kind of annoying in terms of, especially when you get into the intensity, the micro adjustments, like making point adjustments, point percentage adjustments. So you have your HSI, RGB, having RGB is really, really nice. So you can truly control the reds, greens, and blues and have more custom color options. You also have your effects, overheat protection, runtime, DMX settings, CRMX settings, Bluetooth settings. 
you have quite a bit of control over what this infinity bar can do. So the menu is quite extensive. What's really nice too is the amount of mounting options that you have. So you can mount here, you can mount on the other end, and then it, it is, comes included with a mount as well. And I have to be honest, it took me a while to figure out how to actually get this clamp mount on. I thought you had to slide it in here. I was looking around for other mounting points, but what you do is you just slide it in like so, and then you tighten down and you can tighten down wherever it feels most appropriate, which in this case feels better over here. So you leave your dials and your buttons available, tighten that down. And now you've got a nice way to mount this via a gobo head or some other mounting option. And it's really nice and sturdy. Again, going back to that build quality, the build quality on this feels really good. It feels superb. It's really strong. And I'm confident that that's going to stay within a stand within a gobo head, wherever you mount that. Here is one of the setups that you could do. This is a fairly minimal uh, interview setup using the Infinity Bar. So we've got one here at 100%. This is the key that is pumping on the Tyler. It has uh, diffusion on the front of the Infinity Bar, which is really nice. We did try to use some additional diffusion, but it diffused it too much, even at 100%. So we took it off. And then we've got a, another one at almost 100% kicking onto the back of Tyler here. Uh, again, motivated light from the window that is open, kicking on, giving him a hair light, a backlight, which is really nice. So all in all, if this is all you had lighting setup wise, you could totally run an interview and do an interview this way. And I will show you what it looks like right now. All right, so for this particular look, we're going more creative. We're gonna use more of the effects that are built in within the infinity bar. So we've got one infinity bar here, which is really providing most of the light kicking on to Tyler. And then we've got another one set in here in this fireplace to the fire effect, which is really great because this is an actual old fireplace, but it's been shut off. It's not in use anymore. So having the fire effect in a bar shape Again, a smaller bar that can fit perfectly in here, tilt that direction and really cast light up here that makes it look like fire, makes and sells this whole scene. Now we've also got a bulb. It's barely barely lit in here right now from the daylight, but we got a bulb in this lamp over here as well. So three really small lights, two PB, two of the Infinity Bar PB3s, get doing most of the work here to really create this creative look. And I'll show you what it looks like in camera right now. All right, and then the third option is to simply just use the magnets, which work really well. In this case, we've got three bars connected together. So we've actually got two magnets on each, so six magnets total, to be able to just attach this to somewhere that it will have a, what, a magnetic stick. So this could be great use for just illuminating, adding additional fill to a room when you're shooting B-roll. Uh, I can see this being used really, really well on a squat rack within a gym. You could put all of the bars like this, or you could actually just split them all up. Put one on the top of the squat rack, one on the sides of the squat rack, and then you've got three lights that could be illuminated and you don't have to put up any stands. So the third way is just a really simple one of using the built-in magnets to add this light somewhere within a room or somewhere within your space to add additional fill light. I mean, that that's only on what? 60? That's only on 60%. So if you pump all of those to 100%, it adds a ton more light to your space. And again, just a really neat fill light, a really neat light that you can also use just to accent things and add more intrigue, more creativity. Um, yeah, super cool way to just, and I'm shocked, honestly. I'm shocked that it's mounting that strong. I mean, let's be pulling on it. I can give it a decent tug and it comes off, but that's a good mount, don't yeah, you think? Absolutely. That's strong. All right, and so one last little one that you can do is if you get these curved attachments to make a triangle, you can put all three into a triangle and kind of have like a glorified ring light, but then you can take some diffusion, attach diffusion to that, and now you have a much bigger key light 
which to be honest, actually, let me sit here. Let me show you guys. Let me show you guys what that looks like. Honestly, it's not a bad look at all. So you could put all three of these together to create a very large key, add some diffusion to it. Once you diffuse that, then you've got a really nice soft source of light that's also motivated by where this light is coming from, from the natural light of the window. And this totally works. Uh, it's not gonna be my favorite setup out of all of them, but having three different lights, being able to manipulate them in different ways and different orientations, being able to break them apart, set them up in different capacities is really truly neat. And that's why I think this is one of the most versatile lights um, that you have on the marketplace. This is pretty cool to be able to use this as a pretty small and nimble key light. All right, so in total conclusion, I can understand why the $300 price point on one of these is going to keep some people away. $300 for a one foot light seems pretty steep, but the reality is, is the build quality is there, the functionality is there, the features are there. When you think about other gear that you use within your filmmaking, like a tripod, there are tripods like Satchler that cost two, two to three, four thousand dollars for a tripod. And so lighting is also one of those pieces that is incredibly important to our filmmaking. So investing in good lights, investing in versatile lights is one of those things that I can see reasons why you would wanna pick up something like this. Yes, $300 is fairly pricey, but what you can do with this, what you can configure is really extraordinary. And I think that's what makes it really powerful. And if you wanna see more tutorials on lighting, if you wanna see more uses of the Infini Bar or just other lighting in general, drop me a comment below and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.